welcome back to Hutchinson, Kansas in the beautiful Hutchinson Sports Arena. We have just finished session one of day two. We had our first Sweet 16 game and that Barton, the Barton Cougars defeated Walter State Senators 83 to 68. Barton ended Walter State terrific season 29 and three. Coach Jerry Nichols has to be very proud of his Senators. Great season for Walter State. Absolutely. Um, just kind of one of those those years that he has to he has to look back on this season and say, man, like we really can build something here. He's got talent, he's got athleticism, he's a good coach, they've got toughness, he's got all those pieces that, that kind of cultural piece that you need to really kind of be a perennial uh, participant in something like this. Coach Nichols has got that stuff. Yeah, he's kind of has that swagger on the sideline. 100%. He's a, he's a fun guy to be he's around. He's not afraid to tell you that you're an idiot. <laughs> he called us out with 30 <laughs> seconds to go in a game or so. Um, we love Coach Nichols. We certainly wouldn't bet against him. I wouldn't do it. I, I would wouldn't bet for Coach it. Nichols. So just talking a little bit about the Barton game. Barton wins 83-68 to 68, uh, for Barton, plus 12 on the rebounding. They really handled the boards well. Miles Thompson, fun to watch inside of and a fan of his all season long. 22 and 7 on the biggest stage. Leger Jones just consistent throughout. 18 and 10, and your guy Mose, right? Seven assists, two turnovers. Didn't try and overdo things. Only took a couple of shots, but that's okay. As a 6'6 point guard, be a point guard, right? He's a facilitator, right? He gets everybody in the right spots, moves the ball around. I thought he had a really good game, regardless of how many points he may or may not have had. You know, for Walter State. Ramondo Battle ended ended his junior college career with a nice game, 17 points, and he was a focal point defensively for Cali. Malachi Hale comes off the bench and scores 15, but Ramondo Battle, a great ending to a great sophomore season. Absolutely, and I'm sure Coach Ragland was watching the game and was happy to see that Evansville commit, playing the way that he does. What he does is going to translate into the Missouri Valley. He's tough, he keeps things fairly efficient, he just does all the little things that you need to be successful in that league, I think he's going to be good there. I think it's a good fit. Uh, for Barton, really the only chick in the chain, six out of 19 from the three-point line tonight as the tournament goes deeper. You know, that's something to watch for Barton. They're going to probably have to shoot it at a little bit more efficient rate, especially because the winner of the game behind us is Cali or Northwest Florida. Brandon, yeah. this is the game we've been talking about since the bracket came out. Uh, we've been very vocal about it. You selected Cali. I selected Northwest Florida. We love both teams, both programs. The coaches for both are great. Um, I didn't get yelled at by Coach DeMeo yet. 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 And Coach um, Donnie's been very nice to me. Fear the beard, though. Right. Fear the beard. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, we have a great relationship with, with both uh, coaches. Um, both teams are just absolutely loaded with talent. And, these kinds of games is, is just so exciting to see at this level because there's going to be a dozen Division I basketball players out there. For those of you at home that are going to be watching this game on ESPN Plus here shortly, you are in for a treat. Yeah, so Northwest Florida, this is a team that we haven't seen in the tournament yet. So for the fans who haven't tuned in and seen the Raiders play this season and Coach DeMeo's group, talk a little bit about the, you know, last year's runner-up. They bring back Tavion Banks, but let's talk about the Raiders and who they are as a team. You know, what's interesting on this one is there was a redshirt guy sitting on that bench last year whose brother is now playing at Elon named Tawan Simpkins. Pretty darn good player. So he's going to come out of Northwest Florida with three to play, going to be one of the most recruited players in this tournament by the end of it, I think. Um, he is every bit of 6'5". Uh, he's a tough Brooklyn kid. He gets things done all over the place. Left-handed, which Left -handed, always makes things look a little better. Always makes it look a little better. Shoots 36% from three, but he's just very active all over the place. Big guard. Um, you know, we talked about Tavion Banks. Maybe isn't having the best, you know, second half of the season that he would have wanted or expected, especially when he visited Iowa State earlier. But he is still dangerous as can be, and tough and athletic. And watching him and Jeff Nwankwa go at it is going to be going to be something. And I think Coach DeMeo would give him a pass if he comes out here and has a great week for the Raider Nation. And, you know, this Raider team maybe not as deep as some of the other teams that Coach DeMeo has had in the past. Probably really going to play six guys is going to get the majority of the minutes. Very similar to Cali, guard-oriented. I'm really excited to see Jamal Sumlin. 6'2", redshirt freshman. I, I just see him and I think toughness. Maybe not the greatest shooter, but I see a really tough guard. Yeah, yeah, and again, that that red shirt tag on him, right? So you do have somebody 
that it's going to have a few years to play there, but they are yeah, they are in their first year of this, right? They weren't on the floor, uh, you know, for Northwest Florida last year. Same with Tawan Simpkins, you know. In this moment, Cali's already gotten a warm-up out of the way, if you will. And they played on the court multiple times at this point, And right? we've seen those buys can always, you know, not always help you. Yeah, so our belief is the buy, as a wonderful thing it is, it's a great thing late in the tournament, problematic early in the tournament. So so many times the hardest thing for these teams that get a buy, can they survive the first game? Northwest Florida, really good defensively. Brandon, I know you got the stats right in front of you there. I've been impressed with how um, uh, you know, they've been so restrictive, like right. a boa constrictor. They just wrap around you, and you can't get away from Northwest Florida State. How many points are they giving up on the season? Uh, they well, are what does the stats say? <laughs> the stats, going to the stats here, right. uh, 62 Numbers don't lie. points a game. Numbers don't lie. But Cali averages 81. So Something's got to give. Something's got to give. But this is not going to be your Chipola Northwest Florida 40 to 39 game. This is, Please this let is, it be in the 70s. This is, higher, this is going higher. to – Northwest Florida can score now. Yeah. You know, they, they 75 a game offensively. I think this one is going to be a higher paced, higher flying. They don't want to get into one of those drag down games like they wound up in with, with Donnie Tyndall this year. They want to get up and down the floor, but Cali is more than capable of doing that. So one of the matchups I know all you junior college basketball fans are out there dying to watch. Everyone's talking about Tavion Banks versus Jeff Nwankwo. I've got my eyes on the five position. I want to see the 6'10", ultra-athletic Corey Thomas go against the brick wall that is the 6'7", 240 pounds, Jaden Scheider. Scheider, crafty, maybe not the athlete that Thomas is, a great passer facilitator. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Does DeMeo, is he forced to go to his own defense? You know, when you have that kind of athleticism out there for Corey, you've got to figure out a way to change things up a little bit. Uh, you know, Corey, Corey can handle 6'7". Maybe not on the weight side of things, if Scheider can kind of move him around, but that athleticism is pretty special. And if Scheider struggles to, to, you know, to score over him and they have to go outside, Northwest Florida, not a great shooting team. Oh, by the way, Steve DeMeo has been talking about this wild card. He has this ace up his sleeve that he's talking about playing. Jacques Schuler, the seven-footer, has been cleared to play. He's been shelled for some time. Yeah. Hasn't played a lot this season. The Dane, the Great Dane. The Great Dane. But does he have the ace up his sleeve? Does Steve DeMeo play the big guy? Could that present problems to one Corey Thomas? You know, it might be one of those things where he throws him out there and just sees what happens. Right. Give um, him a couple minutes, see how it goes. See how it goes, see how the Great Dane does. Right. Um, <laughs> he's got some dog in him. He does have... <laughs> There's a few dogs in this tournament. <laughs> There's a few dogs. There's a few dogs. St. Bernard sighting yesterday on Panola. We'll see another dog later. <laughs> we will. We will get to see him again. It's a, it's a two-dog night. Uh, so we're, we're expecting a fantastic night of basketball. Barton has already punched their ticket into the Elite Eight. Uh, we have three more. Four more. Three more. Three more. Just three. Don't scare this me like that. This is game one of session two. <laughs> we're just playing six today, guys. Uh, we have a slow day tomorrow with four games. But coming up next, Northwest Florida. Cali, a dream matchup for basketball fans everywhere. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribing to ESPN Plus. Get all of the live action. The guys with ESPN Plus are doing a terrific job. And stay tuned. We're going to have live updates as soon as this game concludes. Everyone have a great basketball evening. Great basketball ahead.